Hi, uh, welcome to a renal research roundup from the University of Ottawa and the Ottawa Hospital. Uh, I'm Swapnil Hiramad, and I have with me today Dr. Anne Bujeya. Uh, Dr. Bujeya is a fellow nephrologist, uh, but she's also, and she's an associate professor at the University of Ottawa, but she's also the director of the Living Donor Program at the kidney, uh, in our kidney transplant program. So uh, we all know that transplants the best form of uh, you know, renal replacement therapy. But what's so special about living donor? You know, why, should, why are we emphasizing living donor, Dr. Bujia? So living donor kidney transplantation is our penultimate treatment for kidney failure. Um, and it living donor kidneys tend to last on average about five years longer than a deceased donor kidney. So that's why they make them the very top end of what we can offer for treatment of kidney failure for a longer life and a better quality of life. Excellent. So, uh, and the innovation that you have brought to us in the in the last few months or years is this this one day program where you know donors undergo most of their workup in one day. Uh, otherwise, you know, before this or or otherwise, if we do, if they don't go through this one day program, how many days or weeks or months does it usually take to do this workup, and what does it entail? Mm -hmm. Well, in Canada, it's been shown it can take on average up to ten months uh, from the time of presenting. Uh, as a donor candidate to donating. Um, I think most programs are probably somewhere in the range of six months and really doing something like a one day evaluation or some sort of expedited, expedited evaluation process really forces you to look at your current process. And so as a result of doing this, our standard or usual care uh, it, what, is easily four months um, just by making it more efficient by having examined it in designing the one day evaluation program, which is really a take home message is I think that we all need to look locally at our own programs and whether it's a one day evaluation or some sort of other expedited one day evaluation or something else that you think may make sense to your local program. I think it's important that we just take the time to examine our processes because I think we're all you know, bound to find something that we could be doing better, you know, assuming that we're not all perfect. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we, are, we can always find some efficiencies. And at the other end, you know, from the donor, they are, it's taking them 10 months. Uh, so, you know, that's 10 months of their life when, you know, something else could be done. Mm -hmm. But from the recipient angle, the recipient is waiting an extra few months on dialysis or, yeah. or what have you, right? Um, so, so we should be looking at this uh, efficiency. But, you know, again, it's easy to say, hey, let's do it all in one day. Uh, how you know what does how do you actually do it? What are the logistics? Uh, you know there are so many different pieces. They need to do you know this test and that test and see all these doctors. How how do you actually practically do it? Well, I think I think it starts with well for us how it started is I met with our stakeholders and what I mean by a stakeholder is all the is the people who are involved in making this happen. You know we have people in CAT scan, we have people in nuclear medicine, chest X ray, EKG, and so on and so forth. So I think that it's first important to meet with your team and then make a plan how you're going to meet with stakeholders and try to come up with some consensus. And we were very fortunate that everyone in, in the study that we're going to talk about was very motivated to help improve the patient experience, in this case, the donor candidate experience, in an effort to try to ultimately improve living donor transplant rates. So I think you first have to meet uh, with your stakeholders and really be open about, you know, what are we trying to accomplish here? And with something like the one day evaluation, it was really a reallocation of resources. It wasn't asking for new resources. So it wasn't asking for more money from our institution. So I think right then and there that made things a little bit easier off the bat. Um, and then we are fortunate enough that we work with great people. And if we can try to, you know, present a vision and try to get everybody on board with that vision, um, you know, if it's very clear what we're trying to do, then I think that that's the first big step. Then once you get past that, then it becomes, OK, well, what's the actual process on the one day? And again, this is where different programs are going to do things a little bit differently. But, you know, for example, we don't need everybody to see a psychiatrist in our program. And I don't there's no evidence that, you know, anybody needs to, for example. So we were able to arrange social work visits uh, the week before at, virtually and provide virtual care. So it's really sort of just hammering out those details 
um, and trying to get everything done on one day, which is very possible. You know, you've got a whole day, even if you just think about seven or eight hours, you can get a lot done in that time. And, uh, and we have a lot of educational materials to help navigate around the hospital and the hospital system, um, even have somebody on a pager ready to be called if there's any emergency. So it's sort of just step by step really working through those logistics. And, and if you'd like, I can share a process map of, of how we do it in our center. Which again, yep. I think is important because I think you can always, you don't have to do it exactly like this, but you can always glean something, you know, what can we do differently? What can we do more efficiently? So I think in common with most, if not all donor programs is we don't solicit li for living kidney donors in Canada. So once somebody contacts our program, then they have to complete a medical, social and travel questionnaire and sign a consent that they're willing to go through the evaluation and go through the lab tests and et cetera. And then we do some preliminary investigations, which is really, you know, like your CBC, electrolytes, kidney function. We look at things just to see if there's any glaring uh, concerns with moving forward as a kidney donor. And we provide some education uh, and that social work visit. We do both virtually a week prior. And this allows us to have contact with the candidate before sort of putting them through a one day evaluation. They're already talking to us. They're already meeting with us you know, there, there's opportunity for them to change their mind if they don't want to do a one-day evaluation or an evaluation at all. So I think this came out as an important piece. And then we rotate them through the various tests. So um, when someone's having their CT scan, another person may be in nuclear renography getting their uh, differential GFR, and we do nuclear GFRs in our program based on previous studies from our program. And then they all sort of take turns seeing everybody. And then ultimately in the after, this is mostly all done by 12.30, 1 p.m. And then they're seeing us in the afternoon. And this provides, which also bore out in our study, a great opportunity for the nurse coordinator, the surgeon, and the nephrologist to be all together. And often we can make some decisions right there on the spot without having to have a bunch of emails and communication after the fact and the coordinator trying to sort of bring everybody together at a later point. So often we can make decisions um, about even the candidacy for donation right at the one day evaluation. Not all the time, but sometimes. And then once those final reports get reviewed, we can often make decisions in two weeks if they don't need additional testing. You know, there's been no surprises on, on the typical testing that one does to become a kidney donor. Yeah, uh, could you show the process? Oh map? yes, I just realized at the end of it that I... Because actually the workflow would be interesting for people who are actually trying yes. to see how it works, right? That would be wonderful. Yeah, and I think I think this this is in the supplement of uh, mm -hmm. in a paper okay, that we've recently okay. published. Mm -hmm. But this is our uh, one day evaluation coming forward with your consent, investigations, social work, and nursing, and then having three candidates and potentially four rotate through testing. Um, and then seeing the whole team in the afternoon, um, making decisions at that point, or perhaps um, once final reports are reviewed, usually about two weeks later, uh, we can we can have decisions again if there's if nothing, you know, an unexplained finding on imaging, for example, that requires more imaging. You know, if there's no additional testing um, that is required, yeah, and decisions that's can really, be made pretty quickly. Exactly, and 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 this way you can see. I guess you can see up to three donors in one single day with all these tests done on the same day. And, and, and probably four. I think we can probably expand to four at one point. It, mm -hmm. uh, it often depends on your CAT scan. And because we do nuclear GFRs, we have multiple blood draws, which again, right. if other programs don't do, that would actually be less work for a one day evaluation in programs that don't do a nuclear GFR, for example. But, you know, expediting donor candidacy allows that even if you don't, if you are not a candidate, it allows, you know, the recipient to look at other options. Um, it definitely facilitates preemptive transplantation so that recipients are not starting dialysis while they're waiting for a donor to mm -hmm. complete their workup. Um, and it also gives donors the peace of mind and donor candidates the peace of mind, which I think is important because, you know, they're they're going through a lot here, you know, and very anxious to know if they've sort of moved on to the next steps. Mm -hmm. Can they donate? Um, you know, it's very important for them as well, and especially as part of fitting this in with the rest of their lives. As most donor candidates are in their mid 40s, they're typically working. Mm -hmm. um, so they're really rearranging their lives for this altruistic act. 
Absolutely. So this picture is from the study that you recently published in Kidney International Reports, and we'll put a link in the comments below. Uh, but can you tell us a little bit more about what was this study? You know, what did you do and what did you find out? Sure. I'm just going to come off my share for this. Yeah. And uh, I'll share the abstract at this point. There's a lovely um, visual abstract done by Denise Arellano, who I'd like to thank Dr. Arellano for. <laughs> So, um, you know, the, the impetus to do the one day evaluation was the inspiration from the study from Northern Ireland that was published in 2015. And it really motivated us to, to look at our program and, you know, what can we do differently? What can we do better? Mm -hmm. um, so that's really what got the one day evaluation program going. And we felt that it was important to to get points of view, you know, what what are the perspectives from both the donor candidates and all these other people that we've brought on board, our stakeholders to say, you know, let's make this happen. Mm -hmm. And so we did these semi-structured interviews that we did among both groups until we really were not gathering much more information. We weren't learning anything new. Mm -hmm. And so really the take home points um, were that donor candidates did perceive this to be time and cost effective, largely related to the fact that it was less visits to the transplant center or to any lab. It was less missed work time or time that they might have been spending with caregivers or family or whatever their normal daily routines were, but primarily it was around work. Um, and they did feel that this would likely accelerate the the ability to know whether or not they were donor if they were suitable to be donor candidates, which we call the determination of donor suitability. Um, and then stakeholders, you know, were almost universally felt that it, that it was important for us to put this emphasis on donor candidate care. You know, we talk a lot about uh, psychosocial impacts of living kidney donation, but what about those that don't even donate, like the donor candidate themselves and that donor candidate evaluation process? So we felt it was important to recognize what they're going through, just even being worked up to be a kidney donor, um, and that it's important to determine their candidacies as quickly as possible for them and for the recipients, um, and then hopefully move forward into uh, increasing our living donor transplants rates and getting those transplants done faster. So those were our take home points. and. And we learned some things, you know, like I think uh, we also learned that we need to make it very clear at the beginning uh, in our one day evaluation program moving forward locally is that we really need to give donor candidates, whether it's in the one day or in our standard or usual evaluation process, a sense of their trajectory, you know, like how long is this going to take barring, you know, the any surprises in their testing, but to really sort of outline for them beginning to end. Uh, would really give them peace of mind. And so that's something that we're working on moving forward uh, from this paper is uh, emphasizing that donor trajectory and what that's going to look like right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. It's it's really wonderful that you have been able to uh, get this program off the ground. And, uh, you know, it's, it's universally uh, the the feedback seems to be uh, really really positive. So uh, what happens now? You know what uh, you know what are you going to do now with these results? Is there anything you're going to change, or uh, where do we go from here? Yeah. So other than what I mentioned about um, really providing uh, mm -hmm. some slightly different education to uh, around the donor trajectory or the donor candidate trajectory, um, we're also looking at the cost effectiveness of this process. Uh, it's unpublished data. We're still finalizing our manuscript for submission, uh, but we we have shown through modeling that this is uh, likely a very cost effective uh, pro process. Really, the cost is the the time up front that was set up in implementing this this evaluation. Um, and so that's the next step. And then the step thereafter will be to look at the recipient evaluation, albeit more complicated. Mm. Um, but I think we need to also get that piece to go with the donor piece and see if taking those both together, we can do increased rates even further. Um, you know, our, our rates of being able to accept donors is still at least 50%, which is excellent. Um, and, you know, if we can get the recipient piece uh, improved uh, their transplant workup, then maybe we can continue to increase rates further, uh, especially around preemptive transplantation so that recipients don't have to gain any dialysis time whatsoever. Excellent. Yeah, that's uh, congratulations again on this work and, and we look forward to those results. 
Swapnil, thank you for uh, taking the time to chat with me, and I hope uh, this is useful to those uh, out there who are interested in doing whatever they can to support living kidney donor transplantation. Excellent. And and uh, for listeners, if you are keen on knowing more about it, Dr. Bujaya is you know is is available, uh, uh, and and would be happy to help you uh, set up or facilitate your programs. Yeah, we can put my Twitter handle in my email in the comments. Fantastic. Thank you again. Thank you.